Hi everyone. So carrying on the mini-series of note-taking apps, I thought today we would look at Athens Research. Now basically Athens Research is basically an open source network knowledge management tool which you can use to advance and improve your personal and collective intelligence. Uh, the tool works in a very similar way as Rome Research does uh, in that you can write in outline format uh, with the ad added advantage that it's open source so you can have access to the code as well as you can contribute to the code um, if you wish. Now the app is currently under development and it's under closed beta testing. So in the Athens Research GitHub page, you can see a couple of ways that you can join it um, or have access to the app. And you can either do that by building it locally or sponsoring the project through the app and Athens Research Open Collective page and then joining the waitlist. And then you'll, you'll get an email as soon as you, have, you can get access to it. Now in the email, what you will get is in essence an app which you can download for your system. And once you've downloaded it and opened it, what you will get is this. Um, it's the app for the Athens Research, which includes a welcome page and a change log page, as you can see on the left hand side. And this current version is 100 beta.22. It is under active development by a great team, with, and they keep adding new features, so keep an eye out on it. Now, what we have on the welcome page uh, is basically just how to use it, a couple of the features that Athens Research has, and a couple of FAQs. So what we'll do is we'll just get, get right into it. So we'll open a daily page, and we can do that just by clicking this little calendar icon, and this will bring up today's daily page. And what we'll do, just so you can see, uh, this is a test page, and we'll just put... And we can also indent. And we can also indent some more. And we can also do some more. And just to outdent, uh, we just shift, shift tab. Uh, so you can go whichever level you want to. And we just put some more text. So it works in a very similar format as, as LogSeq and as Rome Research does. Are very easy to use, very straightforward, and very clear. So this is on the white background. You can have the little toggle up here on the top right-hand corner, and you can have it in the black background, or dark mode. So what you can do, so this was just uh, some notes on the daily page. Um, if we scroll down, we have the earlier pages. Uh, so you have December 18th, and if we keep going, uh, it just carries on adding new pages for today's for, for the date. Um, and then when we open it tomorrow, we should get December 20th. So if we want to also create a new page, it's quite easy to do. So if you go up here on the top left, you can find or create a page. And what we'll do is we'll just create a new page uh, called new page. So it tries and searches for it in your directory um, and in your, in your library. As it doesn't find it, it's suggesting you want to create a new page. So we will put yes, so just click enter. This creates a new page with the title that we had. And we'll just put this is text on new page. And very similar as on the daily page, we can just start writing to our heart's content. And what we'll also do, just for example, we'll do new page. So as you can see now, as it's found a new page, it's it's telling you uh, we're start putting the new page um, in. It's found something similar as the new page, so it's it's telling us we can go to that page, or do we want to create uh, a new page with this title? What we'll do is we'll create new page one, and we'll just put text on page one. So I'll just create a couple of pages, and what we'll do is we'll just go back to the daily page. So one of the great benefits of Athens research and these modern tools for thought, is the linking and the backlinking between the various different pages or blocks of notes and data. So what we can do is we can link to a page that we have, and to do that we can just simply double square bracket, and this will come up search for a page, and we shall do 
uh, if we type it properly, we get to new page. So it's coming up as we started typing new. It's, it's suggesting, do you want to type or do you want to link to new page or new page one? What we'll do is we'll just link to new page. And if I click away from that, you can see it's now come up as a, as a link. So what I can do is I can now click on this link and this will take me to the new page that I created. And you can see now something that we didn't have before is that we have this linked references section and it's basically telling us that on this page or this page is being linked from December 19th, 2020. And what we can do is we can just go back to December 19th, 2020 and this will bring us back to the daily page. What we can also do is if we shift and click, so rather than just simple clicking, if we shift and click, this comes up, it brings up the link in the right hand sidebar. So this is basically just an easy way so you can quickly see what was on the new page just by shift click and you're still on the daily page. So what we can do just simply is we can start, we can keep writing whilst we have another page open and we can quite easily and quickly see what's on that page. And I can do the exact same thing if I do new page one, create a new link, so double square brackets, create a link to new page one. And if I shift click, you can see now it's just added to that page as um, on, the, on the right hand sidebar. And we can just exit out of them just to close that. So that was page linking. And again, if we go to new page one, we see uh, the back link or the, the linked references section being added in. What we'll do, we'll add a shortcut. So if you right click on the three dots to the left of the title, we can add shortcut. And what this does is basically just adds a shortcut to the left hand side sidebar. And what we'll do is on the new page, let's do a link to new page one. So what we should hopefully see on new page one, once we click on it, is that there should be a couple of linked references, one being from December 19th and one being from new page. So if we go to new page one, we can see that it's added in the new page link very quickly and very easily. So now we can see that this page is being linked to these two page, from these two pages and we can quite easily go to these pages. So another thing that we can do is a more granular linking uh, rather than at page level, and that's using uh, block references. So if we do double parentheses or double brackets, it will now, as you can see, it's just slightly differently, search for a block rather than search for a page. And what we can do is we can just start typing um, some, some text. So this is text on new page. So if we click on that, it will come up with a strange looking random number. That's basically the unique block ID of that particular line or that particular bullet point, if you wish. And the format slightly differently. So you can see that it's a link. And when you hover over it, you've got the, the little arrow pointing that's a link. So if we now click on this link, it will bring us to the page. And what we can then do is just start typing some content on this page. And we can see that this page or this block reference here forms part of the new page. So we can see from the breadcrumbs just above the title, if I click on new page, what we have is the new page and this is some text on the new page. And what I can do is I can just start typing some text and I can see it there. And if I go back to the daily page, click on this link again, it will just bring me back to the page and you can see that it's got the text there that we added in. You can also shift and click. And what that does again is it just brings up on the right hand sidebar the, uh, the content that's in that block reference. And similar things as we did on the other one, we can also, if we go to the new page, we can again just create links between various different pages as we wish. So what we can also do is from a page, what we can do, if we do double square brackets, although it tells us search for a page, what we can do is basically create a new page without having to do the find or create new page and things like that. We can already do it from, from a link. Uh, if I just type some text and click enter, what that basically does is just creates that 
text that I put in, and it creates a link. So if I click on that, it will now bring me to the page. So that's a quick way of creating new pages and new things. So another cool thing that we can do is if I shift and click on that linked reference, what I can do is I can already start typing some content while it's in the sidebar. And what we do is what happens now is if I basically click out of that and all I can do is I can close that and if I go to this page you can see it's got the text that we created from the sidebar and it's already added it in to this page. So that's just a great way if you want uh, just to type in or add in some content from one page to the other without having to navigate to the different pages you can just quite easily do that by doing it in the sidebar. So while all of these pages are linked and we only did three um, so once you, once you build your library, you should have a lot more links. One of the issues that comes about is what happens if you want to rename a page. Now, obviously, new page basically doesn't mean much. So if we go to new page and we click to that one, if I rename this to, um, to something, let's just do that as an example, it will rename it. And what we should see is if we go back to the calendar or to the daily page or to any page that that page was linked to, you can see that it's changed the title of it. <clears throat> so now it's no longer called new page, it's actually called the page that you changed the title to. So this is great because now you don't have to go through double checking all the links, make sure that they work or not. It's automatically updated and all of your links work as you'd expect, even just by changing the title page. Again, similar things, we can just open these on the right hand sidebar and you can see we can quite easily close them and if we want to hide the left hand sidebar we can just click on the burger button top left hand corner and that will just get rid of it. Now, another cool thing that we have with that is, is possible to see on Athens research is if I go to the new page or to the something page now you can see that you've got a one on the right hand side and this is basically telling you that there is one reference or one link uh, coming to this place. So if we just do for an example, just on this page, let's create a new link, a new block reference, sorry. And we do this is text on a new page. If I do that, what we should hopefully see is if we go back to the something page, it's now updated to two. And it's basically telling me that there's two references um, being linked to this block which is great, so at least you can just keep an eye of how many block references and block links you have between each of the pages. Another cool thing that we can do is if we want to see the list of pages that we have and we have created, we just click on the right-hand side one, and these are the various different pages that, that are there, so you can quite easily see what's the title of it, a bit of a content or a body of it, and when it was modified and when it was last created. So this is great if you just want to have an index of all of the pages that you have. What we can also do is we can do a to-do list. So if, you, if you've got action items, for example, um, let's do to, to do one. If I do, if I start typing and then do control enter, it will bring up um, this, this query or this formula, which is basically a to-do. And if I click enter, it basically now has converted it into a to-do checkbox. So I can check it and uncheck it uh, quite easily. So that's nice if you've got to-do list, to-do tasks and you want to put them on your daily page, you can quite easily just type, um, control enter, enter, and then you can just tick them once they're complete. So that's, that's a very useful feature. Uh, one of the most beneficial things about Athens Research is that everything is on your local system. So it works offline, it's saved in your local system, so what you can do is just on the right top right hand sidebar you can see a folder icon and this is basically where your database or your file system is being saved so you can see it's just in users documents Athens and first DB transit so it's saved as a tr transit file so if I go to that directory I can actually see the file just here and I can see when it was last saved so 1818 and what we'll do 
is we'll just put some more text. And what we should see is that it will update uh, as soon as the time changes. And we should see it, um, that will update automatically. So everything is saved on your system in, let's say, live. So if I now go to Athens, um, yeah, quick, so you can see now it's just updated the time, so it's just saved it um, just now. So you can be sure that your content is saved. A uh, couple of other things, if you want to scroll back or forwards between the different pages that you had opened, you've got the two uh, left and right arrow side keys, which is great if you just want to navigate between one page and another or go backwards and forwards, it's very useful. Uh, shortcut page is very useful as well because as you can see if, if I just do add shortcut it just easily adds it to the left hand side so I can then just have it easily and readily available and if I want to remove it I can just go back and then remove shortcut so that's that's done if for example on the something page what we can do so you can you can also delete these new created page if I delete that and now go back to that it's basically converted the the link into text uh, just in case so if you if you want to remove a page or anything like that this is what currently happens as I say it's it's under development so there's there's going to be a few changes and implementations and various different other things because um, what you can just do for the time being is if you slash on one of the bullet points you've got these various different options so you can embed a, a YouTube you can embed an iframe I think they're going to implement that you can embed code and various different other things. So keep an eye out on it. So I hope you found that useful. And if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment in the section below. Thanks very much for watching.